One day, I had a conversation with colleagues, and from that conversation, I came to the conclusion that there is a lack of understanding um, about the different terminologies that we use in wound care today. At this time, I'm going to explain to you the major differences between undermining and tunneling. So when you say undermining, it is a tissue destruction that occurs around the wound perimeters and their um, underlying and intact skin. So at this um, situation, the edges of the wound have pulled away from the base. There, these are usually seen in pressure ulcers that are or that have been subjected to a lot of shearing forces. Also seen when the opening of the wound is smaller than the affected tissue below the dermis. In my practice, I sometimes see an undermining and desiccated wounds for some reason. Now, when you say sinus tract or a tunnel, by the way, tunnel or sinus tract can be used interchangeably. It's a channel that extends from any part of the wound and may pass away from the wound through a subcutaneous tissue or muscle. These are seen in the his surgical wounds, it's very common. I've, I've seen a lot of the uh, surgical wounds that were referred to me lately. And the literature also mentioned about um, uh, the incidence of um, uh, tunneling on neuropathic and arterial wounds, but I don't see them very often in my practice. So in a bullet form, okay, so by definition, when you say tunneling, tunneling is a passageway or a channel that extends one direction from the wound base. So remember the word one direction from the wound base, that is a tunnel. So when you say undermining, undermining is a large wound that may occur in one or more directions. So, so one or more directions, okay, that is usually undermining. So tunneling is caused by the destruction of subcutaneous tissue in a linear fashion, while in fact undermining is an erosion under the wound edges. So direction, like what I said earlier, is unidirectional in tunneling and it's multidirectional in undermining. Now, uh, it is important for, to, for me to mention that, that the potential for abscess formation is uh, very common in tunneling. And uh, for undermining, it is zero to none. Okay, remember that because it will affect the way you manage um, uh, the severity or to document the severity of the wound. Okay, now, um, so the extent of penetration in tunneling, it penetrates more deeply into the tissue. And uh, while in, in contrast, in undermining, it is less extensive. Now, how do we treat these conditions? So we treat them a little bit uh, the same. So how to treat undermining first. So loosely pack all the undermine areas to prevent buildup of debris and necrotic tissue. So you need to apply dressings as a hydrogel, gauze, or my favorite is calcium alginate. I just um, tuck it in and, and loosely, the word is loosely do not um, overpack it has to be loose okay and how do we treat a tunnel or sinus tract so loosely pack the dead space with an appropriate dressing to stimulate uh, granulation and contraction so um, the goal is for you to close the sinus tract first while allowing the outside of the wound to remain open because you don't want the wound to close with an open tunnel because like what I said earlier, it is very, um, uh, uh, I mean, it has the high potential for abscess formation. You don't want to be rejoicing and say, hey, I have closed a wound, but then after two or three months, your patient will come back to you and say, oh, you look at this redness, look, look at this injury, and look at this edema, okay, around the original wound because you, you, you thought that you closed a wound, but you're actually, close the mouth of the wound, but you kept the, the tunnel and it has formed an abscess, okay? So that is very important for you to be able to uh, determine the differences between a tunnel and undermining because it affects the way you manage your wound. Uh, that's all and uh, I hope you had a pleasant day.